Coach, you've always said your team's motto is to be relentless. How proud are you the way they were able to hold on in that fourth quarter? And what's it like to be one win away from playing for an NBA title? Well, you know, it's something we've tried to rely on all season long is just having an attitude of, of not giving in and being relentless in a number of areas. But our poise was tested tonight, and um, I thought we fared well responding to their third quarter um, when we couldn't score and, and ball was going in and out. We were able to get enough stops. And um, I thought it was a great response to the talk we had yesterday about competing. Um, we competed at the highest level um, that I've seen from us all season long, especially on the defensive end. And, um, you know, we just have to, you know, have a great deal of balance with our emotions and handle this the right way. Um, not get too far ahead. Yes, we are one went away from where we want to go, but we got to look at the film, uh, prepare even better, and uh, step by step pound the rock uh, over the next couple of days so that we can be better when we play this team again because we know we're going to see a desperate team. Next is Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic and then Dave McMenamin. Coach, you said that it's hard to win in this league. Is that the epitome of that tonight? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, playing a team like that in front of a crowd like that um, and, you know, constantly seeing your shots go in and out, in and out, in and out. Um, that was, you know, a testament to the, the character and integrity and toughness of our guys. You know, every time out, it was all about defense. Nobody was talking about anything from the offensive side, nor should we, because we couldn't score. <laughs> we just couldn't put it in the hole. And I thought uh, DeAndre's um, presence, his effort, the rebounding, shot blocking, his communication on defense, switching out on smaller guys and being able to guard them. Um, he, he was the catalyst tonight on the defensive end. I thought it was an unreal performance from him. And um, our guys rallied around him. And um, then the execution down the stretch to be able to, you know, foul when we needed to and box out and, you know, hit the free throws necessary to win the game. It's all the stuff you work on all season long. Um, a lot of it paid off tonight, especially when you couldn't score the ball. But that was a slugfest. That's what playoff basketball is all about. So I'm just – Proud of our team, but also uh, in the mode of, you know, getting our minds right and, and preparing for a tough game because we know that's what it's going to be. When did you decide, Coach, to we going to foul him? At what point do you think? You well, I think the, the analytics, there's different pieces of data that we've read. Some people say seven, some say 11. <clears throat> I think when you have Chris and Book, who can knock down free throws and Jay as an inbounder when you can execute and get the ball in bounds. We decided to do it a, a lot further out from a time perspective. So I think we started at about 17, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And I, we just trust Chris and, and Devin in those moments. And in that moment, it was Chris pretty much going to get the ball and understanding that he can't give them a, a jump ball um, and you have to go to the ball. And then Jay being able to put the ball on the button. We just decided to trust Chris with the ball to shoot free throws. And then um, we just fouled. You know, we didn't want to give them a chance to you know, get a three off. Next is Dave McMenamin with ESPN and then Kellen Olson. Uh, you guys went up by 16. <laughs> the yeah. They never got over the hump. Yeah. How important was that for you? I think when it was 71-70, yeah. both teams combined, it was like 14-15. Yeah, it was unreal, right? It wasn't offense 101 for sure, but um, the, the poise, we've been talking about it all season long, um, understanding that they were going to make that kind of run. We didn't think we were going to miss that many shots, but one of our pillars is defense. I think every NBA team as a pillar that revolves around defense. And tonight, uh, it was on display. Um, they missed some shots, but I feel like the, the pressure 
over the course of the game. When you compete like that, everybody's tired. And so it wasn't a surprise to me to see that many shots missed. But again, I thought DA's ability to anchor the middle and then his ability to switch out onto guys and guard. There was a skirmish under the basket where the ball was bouncing all over the place and it was DA was right in the middle. And I think somebody tried to shoot the ball under the basket and he just swatted it. I thought his 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 fingerprints were all over that side of the ball tonight. And we had a BOB and we ran a a pick pick for him and Chris throws the ball where nobody else can go get it. DA goes and dunks the ball. Like he he was all over the place tonight. That's the kind of player that he can be. He he basically won that game for us tonight. He was tremendous. Next is Kellen Olsen with Arizona Sports, followed by Gina Mizell. Hey, Monty, in in the fourth quarter when the offensive shots kept going in and out, before that, things kind of spiraled a bit. You talk about poise all year. Is that kind of like a game that's going to come to mind for you now when you think of poise in terms of the way you guys kept defending? No doubt. I mean, we've been in these situations, but certainly not on this stage where you have a a decent lead and all you're thinking is let's just maintain it or increase it. It came out in the third quarter and scored 30 points and, you know, we had a 19. And so at that point, you're just relying on your defense, relying on execution, but you're also relying on the mental stamina that we've been talking about for two years. Um, We saw it on display tonight and every time, Chris and I made eye contact. He was like, both of us were like, we're good. We're good. That kind of thing. Um, Him more than me, you know, in those situations. But I just, we've been talking about it. And it was just really cool to see our guys put that type of mental stamina on display uh, on the road in a, a cool environment. Even though it was against you, our guys just stayed the course. Quickly follow up, you went with Abdul for a couple of minutes. Yeah. How did you like what you saw in that? I just think we, we need what he brings to the table. Uh, it's a tough spot for him to be in. Um, I thought the drive he had on Kennard from the corner, like that's who he is. Um, that, that's a, a tough first game to come back in. Um, but I just I like the fact that he can guard. Um, he can rebound. He's a big body. He moves his feet. And uh, we think he's going to be able to help us going forward. Next is Gina Mizell with Suns.com, followed by Mark Schwartz. Hey, Monty, you kind of just touched on it, but we talk so much about Chris's value in, in crunch time. Um, and usually you think of making a game-winning shot or addition a game-winning pass, but just to sink those free throws, to have the, the poise, all that, it, I mean, it, it kind of feels like this just captures why you guys wanted him and kind of what he's meant to your group. I mean, it's a... <clears throat> My job's not easy by any stretch, but when you have Chris in those moments, there's a level of trust that we both have. Um, I know he wants the ball. I know he'll go get it. And, you know, not many guys are willing to go up to that line with confidence and knock those free throws down. You know, when he missed the one, I know he wanted to, you know, he was pretty tough on himself. But at that point, I was pretty confident in what we were doing as far as fouling and, and not allowing them to get off a three. Um, but there's a great deal of trust in those moments. And, and Book wasn't out there with them. Usually we have both of those guys and Jay is an inbounder. And Mikhail is in the middle, so you have him as a safety. But Chris wants the ball in those situations. Next is Mark Schwartz with ESPN, followed by Joe Von Buha. Monty, along those same lines, that the trust and the eye contact and the knowledge, the, the the connection that you have with a guy who, by his own admission, I couldn't make a damn shot. How did you know that Chris would take care of this when everything was going horribly wrong on the offensive end? Just done it so many times. Um, he did it when we were in New Orleans. You know, he's done it with us this season when he was with other teams. Like, he was always the guy to go get the ball. So, um, you know, he's not afraid of those moments. And uh, it, it's all about winning for Chris. It could have been taking a charge. It just so happened to be a free throw free throw situation. I mean, it's something we work on, something we walk through. But, you know, those guys like Chris just want the ball in those situations because they, they want to win the game. It's not about anything else but winning the game. 
Next is Jovan Buha with The Athletic, followed by Greg Moore. Hey, Monty, um, you, you talked about uh, DeAndre's contributions, and uh, I'm curious about the, the offensive rebounding specifically. He had nine, and then you also had Jay and Mikhail, who each had three. How important was that with how far you guys were shooting and just kind of eating the clock a little bit? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, if you're going to miss that much, you hope to get some of them back. You know, so DA's ability to keep balls in play you know, without going over the back. Like, he's one of the best I've ever seen, you know, getting up in the air and, and reaching over and tipping it to himself. But to your point, to have that many guys or three guys get that many offensive rebounds is huge for us. Um, it's something that I was not comfortable with before this season, going to the boards that much. I was always get three, four guys back. Um, Kevin Young um, is pretty much – forced us to do it and it's really helped us this year, you know, unleashing Mikhail and, and uh, Cam and, and Jay and, and Tori has been really good at that this season for us to get us extra possessions. So it was certainly valuable for us tonight with the way we shot the ball. On the two questions are Greg Moore with the Arizona Republic and Gerald Breguet. Thank you, coach. Thank you for the time. Greg Moore, Arizona Republic. The, that that five minute cold stretch in the fourth quarter where you guys were stuck on seventy one. So first, I can't remember this this group ever being that cold. But do grindhouse games like that do they favor you all or the Clippers? Are you okay going into a grindhouse defensive affair uh, on Monday? Um, I'm I'm not sure I'm comfortable with with anything other than winning. Um, but I think in those moments, it's it's not even about comfort level. It's just about winning the game and doing whatever it takes. You know, there was a game, I think, with Brooklyn had a game this year that was in the 70s, 80s. You know, you, when you have playoff basketball and it's physical and everybody knows your sets, sometimes you're going to have a game like that. Um I'm just glad we won it. So I'm not quite sure I'm ever comfortable in those situations, but I'm just glad we won it. And to be able to do it on the road um, is special. You, to your point, we haven't had games like that this year where we just couldn't put the ball in the basket. But I'm glad when we did have an a output like that, we were able to win the game. Final question is Gerald Brigade with fans added. Hey, Coach, kind of related, uh, the three-point shot hasn't really been falling for you guys for most of this series. Have you been, I mean, obviously this game tonight was just a slugfest in that regard, but um, have you been happy with the quality of shots that you're getting from long range, or is that just a matter of kind of needing to make shots? Well, they play really good defense on us. I mean, when you, when you switch as well as they do, the reason teams switch is to take away the three-point shot. I mean, that's switching – um, in theory, keeps you out of rotations. Most threes are generated in transition off of pushing the ball or pick and rolls where the big dives, you go help and, and you give up a three in the corner of the wing. So when you switch, you tend to not give up as many threes and, and they, they switch as much as anybody in the league other than Brooklyn. So I think that's part of the deal. They, they got up more threes uh, than we did tonight, but they probably take more off the dribble threes with Paul and, and Reggie um, than most teams. So my hope is that we shoot the ball better <clears throat> the next game, but I hope our defense uh, continues to hold form the way that it did tonight. Thank you for the time, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, Coach.